My wife confessed to cheating on me during our European adventure. Now she's begging for forgiveness, but I'm left questioning our future. I'm a 33-year-old guy, and my wife is also 33. About a month ago, my wife confessed to a drunken one-night stand with two strangers we both encountered during a night of heavy partying while on an extended trip in Europe. It feels surreal even as I write this. Here's some background. We've been a couple for 11 years and have been married for the past two years. My wife has been battling severe depression for the last five years, feeling discontent with her career and many of her life choices. I've done my best to support her through all of this, but over the past two years, I've grown weary from trying to be her rock. During this time, she's turned to alcohol as a coping mechanism for her issues. I believe our relationship was definitely stuck in a rut during this period. We sought help from a couple's counselor who advised us to pursue our dream life together in an attempt to rekindle our enthusiasm for life and our relationship. Hey, my wife always had this dream of living abroad for a while, so after some persuasion, I decided to back her up on this. I took a year-long break from my job to join her on this overseas working holiday. I knew it wasn't the best financial decision, but she supported my career in the past, even moving around our home country to accommodate my work commitments. So I willingly agreed to support her this time. Long story short, her depression only got worse four months into our adventure. One evening we went out for dinner and ended up meeting some American tourists, three guys and a girl. We had a blast getting really drunk with them. They were super friendly and even bought us a few rounds. At the end of the night, they invited us to continue the party at their Airbnb. I remember being at their place, munching on pizza and playing a board game. Somehow, the game morphed into truth or dare. I recall stepping away to use the restroom. And when I came back, I saw my girlfriend locked in a kiss with one of the guys. I was ready to explode in fury and tackle the guy, but everyone around me tried to defuse the situation, saying it was just part of the game. My wife echoed their sentiments, claiming it was all in good fun, but it wasn't fun for me. I had just witnessed the woman I adore being passionately kissed by a guy we'd only met a few hours earlier. So I told her we needed to leave right then and there, and we promptly headed home. I took an Uber, and the ride back was filled with uncomfortable silence. She apologized, blaming the alcohol and the game for her actions. When we got home that night, I immediately crashed. I woke up around 4 a.m. and noticed my wife wasn't beside me. I assumed she was in the bathroom so I went to check, but she wasn't there. I figured she might be in the kitchen, so I didn't bother searching further. I returned to bed, intending to go back to sleep. But before I did I wanted to check my phone, only to find it wasn't where I'd left it. That's when I fully woke up, realizing something was off. My phone was nowhere to be found and my wife was missing too. Uh, maybe she was browsing my phone in the kitchen, I thought. I went to check the kitchen but she wasn't there. I checked the backyard but she wasn't there either. Panic started to set in. I wondered if I was dreaming, my mind was racing, where could she be? So I even checked under the bed. I couldn't make a call because my phone was missing. I checked the closet to see if anything was gone but everything was in its place. I even stepped outside to look around, considering involving the neighbors, but it was still too early in the morning. I stood vigil at the entrance of our apartment, until 6 a.m. I was just about to knock on my neighbor's door when my wife pulled up in an Uber. My neighbor emerged and I quickly apologized to him. I rushed over to my wife, questioning her about where she'd been, and expressing my worry after waiting anxiously for hours. She explained that she had left her phone at the Airbnb and had used mine to order an Uber. She claimed she didn't want to disturb me because I was sound asleep, so she decided to go alone. I questioned her about why it took so long given that the place was only a 15-minute ride away. Her initial lie was that she had gotten tired and fell asleep there. When she saw I wasn't buying it, she switched her story, saying one of the guys hit her phone and told her she had to stay until morning to get it back. When I threatened to go there and confront him, she changed her story again, saying she chose to stay because she was tired and no one forced her to stay. I confronted her, stating that I knew she wasn't telling the truth and demanded she spill the beans, or else I'd head back to the Airbnb and get truth from them myself. The next day she confessed that she had kissed him multiple times that night, and he might have touched her inappropriately, but she couldn't recall clearly. At this point I knew something had transpired and she was just going to keep feeding me bits and pieces of the truth, never the full story. I resolved the next day to uncover the whole truth, even if it meant going back to the Airbnb to confront them, assuming they hadn't already left. She tried to dissuade me, but I hopped into an Uber and headed back to the Airbnb to uncover what really happened. Upon reaching I picked up a sturdy tree branch from the sidewalk, just in case I needed to defend myself. Then, I knocked on the door. One of the guys, not the one who had kissed her, answered the door. He tried to slam the door shut as soon as he saw me, but I was quick. I pushed back, forcing the door open and brandishing the stick. I demanded the truth. Even though my wife hadn't confessed to sleeping with them I had my suspicions. 
I asked why his friend had taken advantage of my wife. He got defensive, claiming that my wife had forgotten her phone and had told them that I was okay with her coming back alone to retrieve it. From his confession it was clear that my wife hadn't just slept with the guy she'd kissed, but she had been with both men simultaneously. He insisted that it was consensual. He even showed me pictures they'd taken while my wife was there. In all the photos, she was smiling and seemed happy. I returned home seething with anger and confronted her. She confessed to everything. So the real story was that she had supposedly left her phone behind and used that as an excuse to go back and continue what she had begun earlier in the night. When she returned to the Airbnb, she didn't want to leave after retrieving her phone. Instead, she continued the party, started making out with the same guy again, and then the other guy joined in. They took her to the bedroom and took turns with her. The third guy and the girl were in a relationship, so they didn't participate in any of the debauchery. She apologized, blaming the alcohol again. I reminded her that she couldn't use that excuse twice. I was in a difficult position financially, having traveled this far primarily for her career. I was utterly shocked. We have what I describe as a happy and healthy relationship. We're each other's rock, supporting one another through thick and thin, usually with a smile. She assured me that it had nothing to do with her love for me, or a desire to end our relationship. She explained that her depression was so overwhelming that she wanted a brief escape, a chance to revisit her younger, single, carefree days. She's filled with regret and is distraught, willing to do anything to prove that she can mend our relationship. Logically, I understand this, and I believe her when she says she still loves me. But I can't wrap my head around how someone who claims to love you so deeply can so thoughtlessly throw it all away. She pleaded with me to stay, but as you can guess, I took the first flight back to the States, jobless since I'd taken a year-long sabbatical. We only have one car which is in her name, and I don't have an apartment or any place to stay here in the States. So I'm currently crashing on an inflatable mattress at my mom's place. I feel utterly devalued and betrayed. I gave up so much to support her in this overseas adventure, and the worst part is, I don't feel ready to confide in my family about what really happened. Oddly enough, I feel more comfortable sharing with strangers online. We had a phone conversation the other day because I told her I was planning to file for divorce and inform my family. She begged me not to, knowing how stern my family can be and that they'd never forgive her if they found out. So I'm not sure if I'm seeking advice or guidance, I think I just need to be heard. I feel like I can't fully disclose what happened to many people in my life right now. I want to start individual therapy as soon as possible, because I feel like I've lost a significant part of myself. I'm ready to let go of my old life, the life I thought I shared with the woman I loved. It feels like I'm mourning not just our past, but our future too. After I told her I was filing for divorce, she flew back home. She tried to persuade me that she would attend therapy and address a host of personal issues, including her alcohol abuse. She fully acknowledges her mistake and takes responsibility for her actions. We don't have kids but we do own a house together. We spent our twenties studying, traveling and working in various parts of our home country before settling down. Starting a family was definitely on our radar, but we were in no rush. We had other things on our plate, like solidifying our careers and saving up for our dream home. Everyone has their own pace and priorities in life. And for some, marriage, a house, and kids might be at the top of the list. For us, it was a bit different. What really gets to me is that after the initial kiss, she consciously decided to go back and make things worse by sleeping with not just one but two guys. That's the part that's really tearing me apart. Even if she was drunk, she made a deliberate decision to return. There's no undoing this, no amount of therapy can mend this. The scene keeps replaying in my mind and it's messing me up. As for STD testing, I haven't been intimate with her in any way since that night. Just the revelation of the initial kiss was enough to turn me off completely. I'm heading to get tested for STDs today. I've toyed with the idea of asking her if she's cheated before, because it seems unlikely that her first affair would involve two men at once. But really, what's the point? We're heading for divorce anyway. I've read many stories about infidelity, and I can see why some people choose to stay and work things out. It's not as simple as she cheated, dump her immediately. Each situation is unique and should be considered on its own merits. But for me, I know I can't trust her again, and the mental image of her with two men is something I can't erase, even though I wasn't physically present when it happened. The pictures I saw of her with the two men are etched in my memory. I'm going to need some time alone to reevaluate my entire existence, because it's going to be tough to imagine a life without her, given our long history together. She's tried to arrange a meet-up, but I'm determined to end things. What's been your experience with sharing the details of the infidelity with friends and family? I feel sick to my stomach having to lie about what really happened, but at the same time I feel like sharing the truth with everyone close to me would bring shame, not just on her, but on me as well. It's frustrating having to tell a diluted version of why we're taking a break, and why we cut our big overseas adventure short. Thanks everyone I appreciate were insights.
I've started therapy and have managed to share all the details of what happened with a friend who's emotionally savvy, which was such a relief. So but every day is still a struggle. Nothing seems to take my mind off things, and sleep has become a stranger to me. I end up collapsing from pure fatigue rather than actually drifting off to sleep. Being back in my hometown, living at my mom's place, it's like being a kid again. I know I need time to work through all of this, but these initial stages are just incredibly tough. So now to the next story. Story 2. Caught my wife having an affair with a friend, now facing the decision to divorce. Need advice on moving forward. I'm a 42-year-old guy, and my wife is 43. So we've been married since we were 19, and next year will mark our 25th anniversary. We have three daughters, a 19-year-old who's away at college, and twin 15-year-olds. Most things at home seem pretty normal. My wife has always had her own job and individual interests like yoga and pottery, which is cool. I have my own hobbies too. But lately, something has felt off for the past few months. It's hard to put a finger on it, but there's this underlying disturbance. Sometimes she seems a bit more distant, even during close moments. We still have our regular weekend morning lovemaking, but it feels like her mind is elsewhere. It's like she's physically there in our marriage, but emotionally not fully present. I've asked her if something is bothering her, but every time she says no. I wouldn't immediately suspect infidelity, but I've noticed that she's been spending more time alone outside the house in the past few months. Maybe around six months. She's been busy, but she used to be so upbeat, energetic, and almost giddy. About three or more weeks ago, things took a different turn. My wife started being around the house much more, but she seemed distant. Now she comes up to my office and hangs out with me, but she's constantly sad. It's like she wants to be around me all the time, which I appreciate, but her behavior is starting to worry me a bit. The strange thing is that our twins are also acting strange. They've become unusually sweet to me, offering to help with chores like taking out the trash, which is not their usual behavior. It's as if they all know something that I don't, like I have some sort of illness or something, and I'm completely clueless. Their odd yet affectionate behavior started a few weeks ago, around the same time my wife's behavior changed. Two months ago, I happened to look at our Verizon bill and noticed a ton of texts between my wife and an unknown number. When I asked her about it, she claimed it was one of her girlfriends. However, when I checked her phone, there were no texts with that number at all. I questioned her again, and she said she had deleted them to save space, but I didn't see any other threads deleted. The past six months have been strange, but the past three weeks have been even more bizarre. Yesterday, I made the decision to call my oldest daughter. I shared with her everything I mentioned in my initial post, and she assured me that she would talk to her sisters. You see the twins really look up to her and are a bit scared of her when she gets mad. This morning she called me back and said she had spoken to the twins. She's coming home this Friday for the weekend so we can have a proper conversation. I told her that I can't handle being left hanging like this as it's too much for my heart to bear. I pleaded with her to tell me what's going on. She mentioned that it's bad, but it could have been worse. She reassured me not to worry and explain that Friday is the earliest she can come home to talk. She did mention that there's some good news amidst the bad. However, the twins made her promise to keep it a secret. It's important to note that my wife and the twins are unaware that our oldest daughter is coming home this weekend, and she explicitly told me not to inform them. She was very firm about that. I apologize for not having much of an update to share. It seems like I'll have to wait until Friday to find out more. Some of the responses I've received here and other threads I've read have left me terrified. It feels like stories like mine never end happily. I'm fearing the worst, thinking that my wife might have had an affair and the twins are aware of it. My daughter was being cryptic during our phone call and clearly wants to discuss this matter in person rather than over the phone. It turns out that the person my wife had an affair with wasn't a co-worker or someone from her hobbies. Shockingly, it was a friend of ours, the husband of one of the couples we were close with. So needless to say, he will never be considered a friend again, and I'm determined to let his wife know about what happened. The twins caught my wife with him when she was supposed to be at yoga. They were extremely upset and confronted her about it. She assured them that she had no intention of leaving me or anything like that. According to her, it was just a fling. They both enjoy the thrill of being like teenagers, secretly dating and sneaking around. She didn't realize the devastating impact it would have. What she has put the twins through is almost unforgivable. As soon as the twins exposed the affair, my wife ended it immediately. She had planned on keeping this secret for the rest of her life. She told the girls that she should carry the guilt, and that if she told me, it would alleviate her guilt but completely crush me, which it has. The girls agreed, and they were all set on keeping this secret. However, my oldest daughter became furious with all of them. She went off on them in anger. I'm still processing everything that has happened. I packed a bag and left, causing my wife to break down and cry on the floor. I turned off the location services on my phone and drove about an hour away to a cabin in one of our state parks. Right now, I don't feel like talking to anyone. Only my oldest daughter knows where I am. 
She came to visit me today, and we had a good conversation. She expressed that it's not surprising for her mother to do something like this, because she's always been a predictable stereotype. My wife tends to follow trends, whether it's yoga, essential oils, spad, or any new shiny thing that comes along she gets obsessed with it. Now, in her middle age, she's just becoming another stereotype. The twins are angry at their mother and worried that I won't come back home. Honestly, I'm not sure if I will either. Right now, I don't really want to talk to them either. My oldest daughter said she'll come home as soon as her semester is over and make their lives miserable. She had to leave a couple of hours ago to go back to school, and now the sadness is setting in. Here I am, a middle-aged guy sitting alone in a cabin, thinking I had my life all planned out, but now everything is uncertain. I probably won't post about this again. I'm going to stay here for as long as I can afford it and figure out my next steps. Update. I asked my wife to leave and give me some space. However, she responded with determination, saying, No. I won't abandon our beautiful life and love just because of my stupid mistake. I'll fight for us with every ounce of strength I have and make things right, so we can overcome this. I'm incredibly sorry, and words can't fully express how sorry I am. Please come home and let me fix this. Together there's nothing we can't do. That's just how she is. It's always been her nature to be stubborn, so I'm unsure of what to do. I genuinely need some space. Staying at this cabin has been really therapeutic, especially with its amazing hiking trails. However, I know it's only a temporary solution, and I eventually have to go back home. But I also know my wife. With the way she expressed herself, it would take an act of God to make her leave. On top of that, she won't give me the space I need. If I go back home she'll overwhelm me with her love and incessantly try to wear me down until I go along with whatever plan she has in mind. Frankly, I'd rather stay away for a while. I need to be mentally prepared to withstand her onslaught of affection and rationalization because she's an expert in that. She's always reading those self-help and motivational books and browsing websites filled with that kind of stuff. I made sure to pay for the cabin in cash for a week so that my wife wouldn't be able to track me down if I used a credit card. I already received emails notifying me that someone used a different device to access my credit card accounts, both of them. It's definitely her. I knew if I paid with a credit card, she would look it up and try to find me. I also had a conversation with the twins, assuring them that they were in a difficult situation, but it wasn't their fault. I made sure to let them know that their dad loves them. They mentioned that on Friday, mom was a complete mess, crying uncontrollably. However, by late Saturday she seemed to shift into where I can fix this, we will overcome mindset. Supposedly she's been reading everything she can find online about repairing a marriage after infidelity. That's just how she is. She tends to obsess over things. Personally, I just need more time alone to process everything. Update. I used to commute back and forth from the cabin for work, but luckily we're all working remotely now. It's actually a relief, because I'm about 100 miles away from home. I've been allowing my wife to have a short phone call with me each night, just to let everyone know that I'm okay. But honestly, I don't want to be bothered. I prefer communicating with my daughters through text messages. It surprises me how many young people don't realize that smartphones can actually be used for making phone calls. Anyway, here's the thing. I know deep down that I can forgive my wife but honestly, I don't see a way for me to stay in this marriage and still maintain my pride as a man. Call me stubborn or bullheaded, but my pride as a man is important to me. I've been racking my brain trying to figure out how to keep that pride and stay in this marriage, but it feels like those two things are incompatible. If I want to hold on to my pride, then I have to divorce her because her actions have been a serious betrayal of our marriage and but, if I choose to stay in the marriage, it means surrendering my pride as a man, and I don't think I can live like that. I don't even want to have a discussion with my wife about this, because she has a way of twisting things around and making me agree with her logic within an hour. Have you ever met someone who seems to always get their way with everyone? Well, that's her. My best friend told me that as a guy in good shape, making decent money, and being nice, I'll have plenty of options with women our age. Honestly though, I think I'd prefer to be alone and live a somewhat selfish life for a while. I want to do what I want, eat what I want, go wherever I please, and not have to worry about anyone else. Unfortunately, my time at the cabin is coming to an end. I've been trying to find an apartment to rent, but it's tougher than I expected due to the ongoing virus situation. So I told my wife that there's no way for me to stay with her and still maintain my dignity. I explained that if I stayed, I wouldn't be the man she claimed to love, it would just make me feel broken and resentful, lacking any sense of dignity. I made it clear that we can't continue living like that. She responded by saying we can work things out, and that I'm the only man she loves. I replied that obviously, our marriage isn't great if she did what she did. After a conversation we both agreed that it's time to go our separate ways. I also spoke with my heartbroken twins, assuring them that I love them and will always be there for them. After deep reflection I've realized that I can't stay with someone who betrayed me in such a way, 
My self-respect and dignity are important to me, and I would lose both if I stayed in the relationship.